you so much for watching my YouTube channel. We're finishing our series on navigating change. Really, really phenomenal series. I love it because I think we take these practical things in our daily living and look at them in a Bible context and how to navigate change. Today, I want to look at Ruth. And I want to look at Ruth for a lot of reasons. Number one, she's a chick. Up to this point, we've just looked at dudes. And dudes are great. No, no cut down on the dudes, but we need a chick like represent. Hello, hello. So I also like Ruth because she navigated changes in her relationships. And that's a big deal. We all have relationships and navigating changes for relationships and, and seasons in our relationships. That's a very important, significant thing for us. So when we look at Ruth, the first time we meet her, uh, we meet her in the context she had married one of Naomi's sons. Naomi had moved with her husband to uh, Moab, and they lived there because there was a famine in Israel. They lived there, and Naomi had two boys, and Ruth married one of those boys. Ruth was from Moab. She was a Moabitess, right? So she marries this guy, but the tragic thing, so that's changed right there. She marries a foreigner who lives in her country and who had fled temporarily to, for a place to live. She marries a foreigner, that's challenging. Because if you've ever done cross-cultural marriages, that's tricky. It's difficult. Different languages, different contexts, different worldview. I mean, you grow up and it's just a different dynamic. So you marry a foreign person and, and how do you do, how do you work through those marriages? I've met people who have had cross-cultural marriages and it's challenging. It's tricky, it's difficult. You have to be very committed to number one, genuine love, and number two, communicating, communicating what's in your heart, what your emotions are, all those things is very important. So when we navigate uh, relationship changes, communication has to be very, very important. But when her husband dies, well, Naomi decides she's going to go back to Israel because that's her homeland. And not only does uh, both of her boys die, but Naomi's husband dies too. So Ruth is there, hey, you know, my, my husband died, my father-in-law died. Now I just have my mother-in-law and I feel like I need to keep following and stay connected in that relationship. And she does. She follows, Ruth, sorry, she follows Naomi back to Israel. And she says to Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Your land, your country will be my land, my country. And sometimes we need to be committed to our relationships, particularly when we are led by God. If God leads you to be steady and, and consistent and with a relationship, Naomi didn't have a lot to provide for Ruth. In fact, Naomi had nothing. She didn't have like any resources, any finances, any kind of, she wasn't leading Ruth back to some, you know, opulent place where they take, none of that. There was nothing in place for Ruth, but Ruth felt in her heart, I want to be loyal. I want to be steadfast. I want to be consistent with Naomi, my mother-in-law. And I think in and of itself, that's very valuable. And it's very valuable in our day and age because I think we cut bait on our relationships really fast. In fact, I see it a lot on Instagram. I see it a lot on Facebook where, you know, get the toxic people out of your life. And I, I can appreciate really, and I'm not, I'm not an advocate for abuse, and I, get, I can appreciate not being too close around toxic people. But I think if we keep pushing people away that are toxic, then we pretty soon we've excluded everybody and we better exclude ourselves because ultimately, family, you and I, ultimately, I'm sinful, you're sinful. Yes, I'm under the blood of Jesus, but I have some things about me that are toxic and you do too. Because <laughs> we're human, we're flawed, we're not perfect. And so at some point we say, look, if God has led me into this relationship and maybe God changes the season and it's a new season and God leads you out of it, but I really want us to be careful that being steadfast, consistent, and loyal in our relationships is important. And I say that partly because that's what it means in part to, to have genuine love. If you go back in 1 Corinthians 13 and you look at the description on genuine love, a lot of those descriptions uh, really applaud and recognize value being faithful, consistent, steadfast, patient, loyal. That's very important in our relationships and navigating relationship changes. So she follows Naomi back to Israel and then they, she, you know, kind of does the, gets things out of the field, you know, kind of like reaps a little bit around the edges of field to take back to Naomi for food. And then the relationship changes again because she meets Boaz and Boaz becomes her husband ultimately. 
but it changes the relationship between Naomi and Ruth because now Ruth is marrying Boaz and Naomi's in support of that. And I really love and appreciate that when we go through relationship changes, that we support our friends and our family that go through changes that God has designed and impacted and directing in their life. That we don't push them down or discourage them from following God and following God's plan for their life. And that we pursue God's plan for our life. And that we value and appreciate and esteem the relationships that God puts in our lives. Even for a season, a reason, or just for a lifetime. But let's be conscientious and steward and navigate changes in our relationships so that Jesus can help us know who he is better through us for those individuals and for us as well in those, and in those relational contexts. I think it's really important for us to be conscientious of our relationships because there's connection points and it's culture and it's God letting uh, genuine love work through us as well as in us. So I just encourage you, love to get some feedback. Give me thumbs up, thumbs down. Of course, I'd love to have you subscribe. That would be fantastic. And uh, this is the last of this series. And I just encourage you, want to make sure and follow up next week because it's going to be super, super great. And of course, we need a joke, right? And you're like, that's why you're looking at your phone, of course, to give us the joke. So here's your joke. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. I know, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I can hear you groaning now. Ugh, that's so bad. All right, all right, all right. But of course, next week is going to be way better. Thanks again for watching. Really love and appreciate. God bless. Mm -hmm.